uh, I gotta stop making commentary. So, reflecting on the nation. Christians who were concerned about government, I guess I should use the other side. <laughs> Christians who were concerned about government, well, I'm not gonna cover up the fact that I'm losing my teeth because it's because it's a deep hatred and the crimes committed against me. I would have kept, I would have, Dr. Brian and I would have kept this one. You can, don't work on the back ones, just keep this one in front. <laughs> we'll work diligently on that every two months since I was 26 years old. Christians who were concerned about government masquerading as God, to use Robinson's expression, knew that government needed to be brought under control. So Trump's win served as evidence of their prayers were being answered. Trump was coming in as a builder. He was first going to tear down things that needed to be torn down before replacing them with something better, which is exactly what you do when you tear down the old and build something new. He understood what it means to lay a foundation, Robeson said. He is a builder. What he didn't realize was that he was actually returning to the foundation of our freedom, and we know that the solid rock upon which we are to build is the transforming truth Jesus referred to when he said, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Well, you know, my commentaries, we are still a nation of lies because we had eight years of lies and lies and lies. The culmination of the lying principality here. Uh, so, you know, all lies. After Ben Carson dropped out of the race, Robertson prayed with him nearly every day on the phone. The week that Dr. Carson decided to endorse Trump was probably talked on average about two hours a day. Then all of a sudden he told me, I'm endorsing Donald Trump, and I said, Ben, you've lost your mind. What are you doing? He said, James, listen to me. I've spent two hours with him this week and two hours another day. It's just not the way it looks. So I asked him, what do you mean? And Ben Carson told me, James, I'm telling you. He'll listen to wisdom, and my endorsement comes with the assurance that he will be willing to listen to those who have deep convictions and the ability to communicate their importance, and he agreed to do that, and he did. So Ben Carson is our angel, uh, genius of a man. So um, this has all been borne out. I don't know when this was written, and I'm not going to look it up, but I'm sure it's probably uh, 2016 or 2017. This year, Trump did all that I have been praying for. Jerusalem since two, since, yeah, 2001, when I was laid out in front of the Supreme Court before all hell broke loose in my life. Um, Graham answered, okay. Apparently, Trump did listen. And before long, Robeson was flying with him to camp campaign events, giving advice, and offering spiritual counsel whenever possible. Robeson said he has met with several presidents. None of them were as open as Donald Trump, he told me. Mr. Trump called frequently on his cell phone. He took my calls. We were able to be very open. Honest exchanges where I could share the real concerns of pro-family, pro-faith leaders. And he has. So Jerusalem, pro-Israel, and pro-March for Life, he did it. If he, uh, I got my prayers answered. If he does nothing else, I mean, I don't like my prayers of someone with a resume like mine being able to get a job until she's 65 for another decade. In an interview for his organization's website, Robertson asked Jack Graham, pastor of the 42,000-member Prestonwood Baptist Church in Texas, how he assesses the president's attitude toward people of faith. Robertson said, you've seen him in the setting where someone is sharing their concern. Do you find it amazing the way this president responds to people, no matter who they are? Uh, Graham answered, beyond his personal skills, I'm convinced he has a genuine spiritual interest and a desire to hear the viewpoint of others. In particular, it's apparent he wants to know what conservative Bible-believing Christians think. It's been very gratifying and satisfying. And not only him, but the people he has put into place. Vice President Pence is a great Christian. Eight or nine of his cabinet members, the people closest to him, are Christians. And they are having Bible study and prayers together. And yes, it's Pence and his administration. And Ben Carson, I mean, uh, wonderful Christian. 
Graham also said, I'm grateful that this president has given us the opportunity to speak into his life. When we prayed for him in the Oval Office earlier this week, though he was under a great deal of pressure, he was buoyant and joyful. We stayed in there for a good while conversing and praying. It was a God moment and a powerful experience. Robertson and Graham agreed that Trump's words and actions indicate that this president values, values the opinions of Christian leaders, and he does, by uh, speaking for March, at March for Life. And we were Bush supporters, baby Bush supporters, because he put a ban on partial birth abortion. And that's all we asked for. We didn't go any further. We were with people who were going all the way, who were Catholics, saying no God's receptives at all. But we weren't. It was like, okay, it's like Roe v. Wade and Doe v. Bolton. Doe v. Bolton says you can, as it's coming up, murder the child. And that's ridiculous.